Hello, my name's Andrew Michael, and as Chairman of Judges, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this digital version of the Headline Money Awards for 2020. I hope you're keeping well. On behalf of everyone who's connected with the awards, thank you for joining me in this virtual event that we've put together after coronavirus and lockdown forced us to rethink our traditional awards ceremony. The pandemic has obviously affected everyone's lives in recent months. Within our own socially distanced media bubble, the working practices of thousands of journalists and PRs had to change more or less overnight to cope with the crisis. Jobs sadly have been lost and various money titles have closed. Zoom calls are the new way to keep up with contacts. The art of ignoring emails has been taken to a new level while we're all working remotely and entire financial sections are routinely being put together from people's spare bedrooms. Announcing trophy winners might seem a little trivial against this wider backdrop of events. But the show has to go on. And even if we can't celebrate in the traditional way until later in the year, it's actually more important than ever to recognise financial media's best work. You don't need me to tell you that financial coverage has been a main pillar of the news agenda these past few months, with the government announcing packages worth billions of pounds and stock markets seemingly in free fall one moment and then on the rebound the next. It's the work that you do, reporting, communicating and generally making sense of money matters. That's at the heart of the Headline Money Awards. I'm sure many of you watching this broadcast would actually have attended in person the awards evening that we had to postpone back in May. And if you're not so familiar, I ought to explain that this long-standing event is often referred to as financial media's equivalent of the Oscars, where peer group recognition is all important. Before we announce the winners, a quick reminder that 2020 is the first year where Headline Money invited submissions from the financial press, rather than hold a nominations phase. We were overwhelmed by your enthusiasm and received entries from more than 500 different individuals media outlets and organisations, a remarkable number from our specialist corner of the media. An initial sift of entries was carried out by a large panel of financial journalists and then, with lockdown in place, judging of the category shortlists had to take place via video calls instead of our usual face-to-face -face sessions. But that didn't make the process any less rigorous. As usual, there was plenty of scrutiny and debate, and while some decisions were straightforward, Others were much, much closer. More than 100 judges took time out from their crazy lockdown schedules to be involved, for which we're extremely grateful. Suffice to say, we've been champing at the bit ever since to announce our winners, including, of course, this year's Headline Money Journalist of the Year. And thanks to the wonders of technology, that's what we're going to do right now, with help from our fantastic category sponsors. So, Win or lose, whether you're watching this broadcast in evening dress or your birthday suit, please charge your glasses, get ready to share your celebrations, as well as your looks of triumph or commiseration via Twitter and the hashtag HMAwards20. And let's reveal the results of the 2020 Headline Money Awards. Our first set of awards recognise the UK's best journalists writing about specialist aspects of finance. There are two trophies in each category, one for business-to-business -business journalists, the other awarded to those writing for a consumer audience. And so to our first award, which is Mortgage Journalist of the Year. Let's take a look at the shortlists. Okay, I'm delighted to reveal that our B2B winner is, drum roll please, Owen Sanderson from Euromoney Global Capital, who, according to the judges, demonstrated some seriously impressive industry knowledge. In addition, it's very well done to our winning consumer journalist, and that's Telegraph Media Group's Adam Williams, who the judges praised for his excellent investigative work. Very well done to both Owen and Adam. Our second category is General Insurance Journalist of the Year, sponsored by More Than. Here's a reminder of the shortlisted journalists.
it's now my pleasure to hand over to More Than's Managing Director, Kay Martin, to reveal both our category winners. Thanks, Andrew. I'm delighted to present the award for the General Insurance Journalist of the Year. In the B2B category, the award goes to Jen Frost, whose name really stood out for the journalist for her outstanding entries of well-researched and well-backed up scoops. So congratulations, Jen. The consumer winner category submitted a really strong set of exclusives, which the judge said were bang on point for the audience. Well done, Sam Barker. Congratulations to you both. Thank you, Kay, and congratulations to both Jen and Sam. 2019 was a big year for investment stories. So who's going to come out on top as we now turn to the Investment Journalist of the Year category, supported by Schroders? Here are the contenders. And now over to Schroders to announce the category winners. Hi everyone, I'm delighted to announce the winners of the Investment Journalist of the Year category. In the judges' view, the outstanding B2B winner epitomised real journalism in 2019. Congratulations to Daniel Groat. Now for the consumer category, the winner's stories contained everything the judges were looking for. Well done to Adam Williams. Thank you to Schroders and well done both to Daniel and especially Adam, who's already won two trophies after just the first three categories. Our next specialist award is for Protection Journalist of the Year, sponsored by Guardian. Here's a reminder of the journalists in contention. And now I'll hand over to Guardian to reveal those all important results. Thank you, Andrew. And hi to everyone watching. With articles demonstrating impressive range and versatility, I'm delighted to announce the B2B winner is Adam Saville. And now on to the consumer winner. All three of the winner's stories were described by the judges as excellent, explaining different forms of health insurance in a way that was right on point for their consumer readership. Taking first place is Harvey Jones. Congratulations to both winners. Thank you to Guardian and many congratulations to both Adam and Harvey. Moving on now, we turn to Pensions Journalist of the Year sponsored by Scottish Widows. Here's a reminder of both the shortlists. Now the judging was very tight in the consumer category and as well as naming a winner, the judges also wanted to highly commend the FT's Josephine Cumbo. So well done to Jo. Ready to reveal the names of the winners is Scottish Widow's Head of Policy, Pete Glancy. Let's see who's come out on top. Good luck to all of the finalists. First, the B2B award. The winner in this category certainly knows her stuff when it comes to the pension industry delivering year in and year out. With back-to-back -back wins in this category, congratulations go to John Greenwood. Well done, John. And now for the Consumer Award. The winner's submission delivered a real wow factor in what was a quality field. Congratulations to the winner in this category, Ben Wilkinson. Well done, Ben. Well done to everyone. Next up, it's time to reveal our Savings Journalist of the Year, sponsored by RCI Bank. Here's who's in the running. And over now to RCI Bank for the big reveal. Greetings, everyone. The judges have described the submissions of the winner as timely and informative, covering an array of financial circumstances. The Savings Journalist Award of the Year goes to 
Kalpana Fitzpatrick. Congratulations, Kalpana. Very well done to Kalpana. Our next pair of awards shine the spotlight on financial journalism's up and coming talent. The first of these is Rising Star of the Year for those working in the business to business press. And the trophy is sponsored by Key Group. Here's a quick reminder of the shortlist. Standing by to reveal the result is Key Group CEO, Will Hale. Thank you, Andrew. The winner of Rising Star of the Year for B2B titles is a reporter who not only seeks out stories as you'd expect them to, but clearly wants to serve their audience by asking the really difficult questions. So it's a very well done to Imogen Chu. Congratulations to Imogen. Our attention now turns to the rising star of the year in the consumer category, and this trophy is sponsored by Yolt. Here are our six shortlisted contenders. And making the announcement from Yolt is Chief Product Officer, Pauline Van Brakel. In a very tough category, the judges were impressed with the winner's submissions, which were original, thought-provoking and interesting. Clinching the title of Rising Star of the Year consumer is Will Kirkman. Congratulations, Will. Thank you, Pauline, and well done to Will in what was another really close-fought category. Have you recharged your glasses yet? It's time for a slight departure now, with the focus moving to PRs and those working on the communication side of financial media. Each of the following winners was decided by an extensive vote amongst the financial journalist community as conducted through the Headline Money website earlier in the year. Our first award is always a competitive category, namely Thought Leadership Initiative of the Year. Here's a reminder of the shortlisted press campaigns, along with the organisations responsible for them. As it was a close call, the judges decided to highly commend Royal London for its campaign on funeral poverty. So well done to all concerned there. But our winner lifting the trophy for 2020 is the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association for its Retirement Living Standards campaign. This was supported by no less than 22 pensions industry organisations and received extensive media coverage. Congratulations. Next, we reveal our expert of the year. Who did financial journalists decide was the best go-to individual for insights, analysis and comment over the past 12 months? Once again, it's a strong shortlist. And our 2020 awards winner is... Russ Mould, Investment Director at AJ Bell. Well done to Russ. When it comes to stock market comment, he's a very familiar name, both in print and across the airwaves. We now turn to the Rising Star PR Professional of the Year. And here are the names in the running. Because the results were again very close, we've included a highly commended in this category. And that goes to Sandy Downs of Team Spirit. Well done to Sandy. As for the winner, just pipping her at the post, it's a case of hearty congratulations to Interactive Investors Personal Finance Campaigner Myron Jobson. Myron was responsible last year for various PR campaigns, including the Great British Retirement Survey. Our next category recognises the PR professional of the year. Let's see who made it onto this prestigious shortlist. It was another close call, so we're including a highly commended in this category. And this goes to Charlie Musson, Head of PR at AJ Bell. 
Congratulations, Charlie. But just securing the top spot this year, it's Quilter's external communications manager, Kathleen Gallagher, whose work boosted coverage for parts of the company by more than 40%, as well as increasing the profile of its business and its spokespeople within the financial journalist community. Well done to Kathleen. Press Team of the Year is up next, and this trophy is sponsored by Lansons. Our shortlisted teams are Who will get the bragging rights as Financial Media's best press office? It's my pleasure to hand over to Lansons to reveal the winner. So I am delighted to announce that the winner of Press Team of the Year 2020 is AJ Bell. Well done to the team there, who clearly had a fantastic 2019 in the eyes of financial journalists. Our final category in this section is also a team prize, with plenty of rivalry at stake, as it's the one for PR Agency of the Year. The companies in the running are... And drumroll please, our winner is... Team Spirit, congratulations to this specialist financial services PR agency whose distinct approach to business won plaudits from many financial journalists and helped it to land this coveted trophy for the first time. Another change of focus now as we turn to our Outstanding Achievement Award. This trophy recognises an individual who has made an exceptional contribution to financial services media. This year, the award is sponsored by Schroeder's Personal Wealth. Let's hear from Senior PR Manager, Charlotte Banks, who will reveal the winner. Thank you, Angie. The Outstanding Achievement Award goes to someone whose initiatives over the last 12 months have helped shine a spotlight on the increasingly important issue of mental health in financial services workplaces. From his contributions via blog entries and podcasts, and even taking a discussion about mental health issues on the road and encouraging those in the industry to share their experiences, we're delighted to recognise new model advisors, Ollie Smith, for his services to this extremely important subject. Congratulations, Ollie. Moving on, our next prize is for the Blog of the Year, which inevitably covers a wide sweep of the financial landscape. The blogs in the running for 2020 are... And it's many congratulations to the winner, which is Lottie Earns. That's back-to-back -back wins for Charlotte Burns' blog, which one judge described as one that's not only full of insights, but even managed to take down a con artist to boot. Staying in consumer mode, we now reveal our Consumer Champion for 2020, a category that's sponsored by LifeSearch. Let's have a look at our shortlisted financial agony aunts and uncles. And standing by, we have LifeSearch CEO Tom Bagri, ready to reveal the winner. The winner has shown a true commitment to their readers getting to the bottom of complex cases and winning back a staggering amount of money. An impressive debut year in the role. Congratulations to Katie Morley. Well done to Katie. Next up is the award for Freelance Journalist of the Year, sponsored by eToro. With a burgeoning freelance community, this is always a tough category to win. And on the shortlist we have... And here to reveal the winner is eToro's global PR manager, Katie Evans. Many thanks, Andrew. The winner was described by the judges as a really good all-rounder with a super writing style. So the freelance journalist of the year title goes to... Laura Waitley. Many congratulations to Laura on her success. It's now time to get on our soapboxes as we turn to Commentator of the Year. And this award is sponsored by Octopus Investments. Our shortlisted columnists are
The winner was commended for their bold approach and powerful writing. Taking the top spot for 2020 is James Coney. Well done to James. Our next trio of awards recognise the best financial stories from the last year. The first category highlights the personal finance story of the year. There were a record number of entries in this category, and here are the ones that made it to the shortlist. The winner is Faye Lipson from Witch for her special report, Why the System is Failing Victims, an expose about how scam victims could potentially end up being ignored by the police's fraud reporting system. The next category is B2B Story of the Year, for the best report written for a professional audience. Here's the shortlist. And congratulations to our winner, which is New Model Advisors, Daniel Grote, for Woodford Needs Hargreaves Lansdowne, now more than ever a report that one of the judges described as, quote, astonishing, concerning the big investment story of last year. Finally, our third award in this section is for Business Story of the Year, and this trophy is sponsored by Rostrum. Our shortlisted stories are... And I'll now hand over to Sophie Placido, Director of PR and Strategy at Rostrum, to reveal this year's winner. The winning story was described by the judges as an outstanding piece of journalism, giving voice to people who may not have had one otherwise against a huge global corporation. The trophy goes to Kevin Peachy for The Danger in Our Homes. Well done to Kevin. Our next award acknowledges the local or regional journalist of the year and is sponsored by Saga. The shortlisted contenders in the running are. It's my pleasure to ask Saga to reveal the winner. Thank you, Andrew. The judges applauded the winner for their solid news-driven coverage, which was also packed full of local commitment. Congratulations go to Robin Johnson. Very well done, Robin. We move on now to the award for Consumer Money Journalist of the Year, sponsored by Scottish Friendly. This is always a competitive category. Let's remind ourselves of the shortlist. I'll now hand over to Scottish Friendly to announce the winner. A clear frontrunner in this category, the winner was praised for going above and beyond the call of duty. The Consumer Money Journalist of the Year is Katie Morley. Very well done again to Katie. That's her second win on the night as well. Our next category is B2B Journalist of the Year sponsored by Yolt Technology Services. Let's have a look at the all-important shortlist. And I'll now ask Chief Business Officer at Yolt Technology Services, Leon Muish, to reveal who's come out on top. Described as a leader in their field all last year, the winners reporting on Woodford broke new ground. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of B2B Journalist of the Year is Daniel Grote. Congratulations, Daniel. We now turn to the airwaves with the award for Broadcast Journalist of the Year, kindly sponsored by Quilter. Here's a reminder of our finalists. And it's my pleasure to ask Quilter to announce the result. The winner of Broadcast Journalist of the Year was praised by the judges for their clear presenting style, 
coupled with authority and knowledge. And the winner is Felicity Hanna. Well done to Felicity in another high caliber category. As we head to the awards climax, there are just two trophies to go before we reveal our journalist of the year. So now's the time to recharge your glasses if you haven't done so already, which you probably have several times. All done, good. Now let's find out who's won our B2B title of the year award. The titles in the running are The category is always hard fought and this year's winner is the team from New Model Advisor, applauded by the judges for their excellent understanding of their audience and willingness to push boundaries in tackling challenging issues within the financial services marketplace. Well done to all concerned. We now turn to the Consumer Money Title of the Year as sponsored by CompareTheMarket.com. Let's take a look at the finalists. To reveal the winner, it's my pleasure to ask CompareTheMarket.com's Director of Money and Mortgages, Mark Gordon, to do the honours. The winning title this year is The Full Package. Excelling above all others and taking home the trophy in 2020 is the Sunday Times Money. Massive congratulations to the team. Well done. Congratulations to James and his team and indeed everyone else who's landed a trophy already. But now's the moment you've all been waiting for as we reveal the 2020 Headline Money Journalist of the Year, which I'm delighted to say is sponsored by Open Money. Let's hand over to Anthony Morrow, co-founder and CEO of Open Money, to discover who's won. The Headline Money Journalist of the Year is awarded to the journalist who has done something just that little bit extra to stand out from all the other superb category winners. This year has seen some exceptional performances and all the candidates should be very proud of their achievements in this year, although there can only be one winner. This year's winner, her column hit the ground running last spring and has been generating fantastic results for her readers ever since. The winner is of course, The Telegraph's Katie Morley. Well done, Katie. Thank you, Anthony, and to Open Money. Hearty congratulations to Katie and to everyone who's either been shortlisted or actually managed to win a prize this year in what turned out to be some very competitive categories. All of the results and additional information can be found on the Headline Money Awards website. And it just remains for me to thank all of you who have participated in the awards this year, including all the entrants, the judges, and of course our sponsors for their marvellous support. I'd also like to thank you for tuning in. Stay safe and well, and I hope we're able to catch up again in person very soon. Thank you.